In this lesson we will explore the files that we saved in the folder structure that we created. Let's go to the desktop and see what happened. Here on my desktop you can see the root folder that I created named Delphi Schools Video Projects. I double click it to open it and there you can see the folder called First Demonstration. When I open that folder you can see a list of files. I only saved two files, the Delphi project file and the Pascal source file. As you can see Delphi also created, named and saved many other files. At the moment there are 8 files in this folder. Remember that number. We will revisit this folder later but for now I will just close the file explorer. Now let's open Delphi from our desktop. My desktop icon for Delphi is in the Windows taskbar. I click on it to start Delphi. Normally Delphi starts up with the program that you saved the last time before you closed it. But let's assume that I created some other applications and now I want to open the project that I saved in the previous topic. To do that I click on the file menu and then I click on the open command. The open dialog window pops up. This dialog window looks similar to the one that we used to save our files. But in the title it displays the word open and instead of a save button it has an open button. Normally this dialog window opens the folder that we used the last time but if it is not the folder that contains the files for the program that you want to open you can just navigate to the location where you created your folder structure. So I'll just go ahead and click on the desktop button. In there I scroll to the folder that I created before. Its name is Delphi Schools Video Projects. And to open it I double click on it. In this folder you will normally see a list of folders for all the programs that you've saved. In this case I only have one folder called First Demonstration. To open it I double click on it and the project and unit files are listed. In a future lesson you will learn that a program can have multiple unit files and that you can open them individually. But for now we are interested in opening the project that we saved earlier. Remember now we saved the project file with the underscore p suffix. Now you can see why a naming convention is important. If you just named both files first demo without prefixes or suffixes it would have been very confusing. To open the project file double click on it and it opens your project in the IDE. The project is now open in the IDE but sometimes when you open a program that you save it can happen that the form is not available in the IDE. You can make it available by clicking on the view menu and when it drops down click on the forms command. Select the form's name in the window that pops up and click the OK button. Now you can make changes and when you are done you can save the changes. The quickest way is to click on the save all button in the speed bar. For now I don't want to change anything. I close Delphi again and I want to go back to the folder structure on the desktop. I open the folder that contains my project. So I double click on Delphi schools video project and then I also double click on first demonstration. When that folder opens go and count the files now. Remember that we only had 8 files when we counted them before. Now we have 9. Delphi added another file but because it is used by Delphi internally you do not have to worry about which one was added. You can also open your project from within inside this folder. It's simple you just double click on the Delphi project file in this folder. The project file keeps track of all the files associated with your program. And when you double click on it, it will open and link to all the files that are needed by Delphi. Let's double click on the project file and see it in action. This is an easy way to open your programs. While you are developing your application, you see it in the IDE and you can use the features of the IDE to make changes like adding more components to your form if you want to. Or you can change properties in the object inspector. Because you are designing while you are in the IDE, we call that design time. While you are in design time, you can see the dots on the form and in the speed bar you can see a button with a green triangle. This is however not the way that your users will see the program. There is a good chance that your users don't even have Delphi installed on their computer so they don't have an IDE. Therefore to them this program is useless. In order for you to see your program in the same way that your users will see it, you must run the application. When you run the application, it is like a preview of your application. You are then seeing it like your users will see it. You will also be able to test your program to see if your users will get the results that you expect them to get. While your application is running, we call it runtime. Remember the two modes. Design time is while you are designing and programming your application. 
and runtime is while you are previewing and testing your application. The quickest way to run your program is to click the button with the green triangle. That is also called the run button. Another quick way to run your application is to press the F9 key on your keyboard. I will just click on the run button in the speed bar and there my program is now in runtime. Just move the form down and you will see that the form looks different than the form that you created in design time. It doesn't have the dots on its surface. You also know that you are in runtime if the run button in the speed bar is disabled. There you can see it. It changed from a green triangle to a grey triangle. I will now go ahead and type some text in the edits and click on the button. You see there, nothing happens when I click on the button. That is because I didn't give the button any instructions or code to tell it what to do when I click on it. But don't worry, we will do that later. While your program is in runtime, you must not attempt to make design time changes. You must first break out of runtime back into design time. You can do that by clicking the close button of the form that is running. Now you can see the form in design time again, the one with the dots. Also notice that the run button in the speed bar is enabled again and it displays the green triangle again. In future lessons I will explain some other things that you must look out for while in runtime. Now that we ran our application, let's go back to the folder structure on the desktop and see what happened. But let's close Delphi first. You should know by now how to open the folder that contains the files. So I will just go ahead and navigate to it. And look at that. The last time we visited this folder we had 9 files. Now after we run the application, we have 12. So Delphi added a few more files when you ran the application. For now, you don't have to know which files were added. What is important to know is that Delphi saves its new files in the same location that it used before. And all your application files are organized together in the same folder. Now, let's assume that you have 10 or 20 projects and let's assume that you are not creating individual folders for each application. Let's say you just save them all in the same folder. Can you imagine the chaos that it will cause? I'm sure that you understand now why it is so important to name your files and to organize them in a proper folder structure. Now that your files are named and organized, you will find it easy to transfer your project to a flash disk or any other portable drive. In an earlier lesson, we looked at buttons, edits and labels. All of these components are contained in the standard tab of the component palette. To create a user-friendly and professional looking form, we also need to look at some other components. In the next lesson, you will learn how to use some of the components in the additional and samples tabs to enhance the graphical user interface.